Ông quay chọc. President, please be seated. Ông chấm ra, bất cả. Một to cái chấm ra cả này tệ. The court is back in session. Reprise de l'audience. Before I give the floor to the co-prosecutors that the witness feel uh, sometimes feel difficulty to respond to long questions put by the co-prosecutor and uh, when the witness speaks it is very difficult as well for us to understand in Khmer and I think perhaps the witness has difficulty in understanding Khmer language as well so I suggest and instruct the co-prosecutor to put a simple and short question so that the witness can respond to the questions otherwise it uh, will pose a trouble in the ascertaining the truth in our case now the floor is given to the co-prosecutor to resume his line of questioning you may now proceed thank you mr president a good afternoon uh, mr witness I want to ask you a few more questions about your background um, could you tell us about your family in Ampul village back in 1973? Were you married and did you have children then? I was married in 1973 and I had two children at that time in Ampel village. And was there a mosque in Ampel village? Yes. Uh, there uh, was a big mosque, and the mosque remains until now. Can you tell us a little bit about the Cham leaders in your village or district? For example, did you have a Hakim in your village, and who was he? Let was the village, let and loss over the village chiefs uh, during that time, the Lonal period. Were they Hakim? Or were they uh, regular village leaders? There were Hakims at uh, Papi. However, I uh, did not know Hakims uh, very clearly at that time. Do you know what happened to the Hakims after the Khmer Rouge arrived? I have no idea and I also uh, did not know at that time uh, what uh, did Hakims do or what uh, the pos their position were. I want to now turn to the period when the Khmer Rouge arrived and took control in your area and to ask you about how things changed in your village when the Khmer Rouge took control there.
Khmer Rouge came to control all kitchen ways. Uh, had been collected. A halls uh, were built for all of us. Uh, we had to eat collectively, communally, and uh, the village, uh, the area, was under strict, uh, strict control of Khmer Rouge at that time. When the Khmer Rouge first arrived, were you still allowed to practice Islam? and to speak the Cham language? Uh, and if so, how long were you allowed to practice Islam and speak your language? Answer. No, no more prayers. And no more religion. And the situation was strict at that time. Who insisted on practicing Islam, make a religion, they would be arrested, and uh, we were not allowed, we could not even uh, uh, sit in group and discuss when I was young. Do you remember who or how it was announced to the people in your village? that you were no longer allowed to practice Islam. Answer. All I know is that uh, Comrade Singh was the chief and he was responsible for Krochma uh, district, uh, Comrade Singh. He was strict. He ordered us to have a short haircut and we were not allowed to practice Islam. And headdress were not allowed to be used also at that time. When the Khmer, Khmer Rouge um, banned you from practicing your religion, what was done with all the Korans in your village? Et à ce moment-là, qu'est-il arrivé au Coran dans votre village, aux exemplaires du Coran? Korans had been uh, gathered, collected, and uh, burnt. And uh, they were collected from houses and burned down. Ils ont été collectés, pris dans les maisons, and uh, Korpol uh, um, made mention that time there was a Korpol rebellion uh, within villages uh, to fight against uh, the prohibition and uh, to such acts. I'll be asking you some questions about uh, that rebellion in a little while. Uh, who was it that went around and gathered and burned the Korans in your village? Chef de village. Security guards uh, within the Les within villages uh, went village. around and collect uh, the Qurans. They received order from upper echelon. And the mosque in your village, uh, what was it used for Question. when you were no longer allowed to practice village, your religion? De pratiquer votre religion. Answer. Muslim uh, women and uh, old uh, Muslim ladies uh, were called to stay in the mosque and uh, they were assigned to do uh, agricultural farming. 
confier la tâche, la tâche d'agriculture de, de donc on les a chargés de cultiver. Can you explain a little to the court about the importance of prayer in the Islam religion and what it was like for the Cham people when you were no longer allowed to go to prayer? Comment c'était pour les Cham lorsque l'on vous a interdit de prier ou d'aller prier? And when you were no longer allowed to practice your religion, uh, were you also not allowed to speak the Cham language anymore? Answer, no. We were not allowed to speak a Cham language, absolutely. Only Khmer language was allowed to speak at that time. We could uh, speak a Cham, but, you know, in a secret way, not loudly. If uh, they happened to hear uh, we speaking Cham language, we would be taken away and killed. Were there many Cham people in your area uh, who did not know how to speak Khmer well and who had difficulty when they could no longer speak the Cham language? Answer, Cham language was banned, but we could uh, speak a very uh, little Khmer at that time. And after three years, uh, we were allowed to speak uh, the, our language. Uh, and uh, during that period, even pox were not allowed uh, to eat. Even the pox uh, were were uh, given to all of us to eat, rather. Et à cette époque-là, on nous a donné même du porc à tous pour manger. You mentioned that one of the things that happened with the Khmer Rouge was that women, people, had to have their hair short. Can you explain um, was it against the Cham religion or culture to have, for women to have short hair? Answer. For, most, for Muslim people, based on the holy book of Quran, pour les musulmans, we had to, Muslim women has to have long hair. However, during that time, the uh, women, Muslim women, uh, were instructed to have a short a haircut. So uh, that is the difference cheveux. between the religion. Voilà la différence entre during that time, we adhered to their instructions. It, it was okay because uh, after a while our hair grew long. How did the Khmer Rouge uh, go about uh, making people cut their hair? Did they send in cadres to do that? S'occuper de la coupe de cheveux. Hot chum, kamapi bal, eh? Pim, 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 pim
No, no cat rays are coming non. to cut our hairs. Aucun the order went through village chiefs and chef we village, were instructed to have short hairs. Otherwise, we were court. considered opposing Ankar. Sinon, nous étions considérés comme nous opposant à l'Ankar. And when the Khmer Rouge took control, were you allowed to still wear traditional cham clothes? No. Rather, actually, we were allowed to wear our traditional clothing. Uh, however, for prayers, Cependant, practicing religion was uh, prohibited prières, uh, for traditional clothing. It, it does not uh, cause any trouble to all of us. We were allowed to wear nous. our traditional clothing at the time. Was there any point in time where you couldn't wear your traditional clothes and you had to wear all black? Clothes. We had the same uh, black clothes to wear after we were given with uh, such clothes. Tous les mêmes vêtements noirs à porter une fois qu'on nous les a remis. You made mention a little while ago to a rebellion that took place in Copal. Uh, what can you tell us about what took place at Copal? Copal. Answer. We people within Ampel village were not allowed to Nous, cross village uh, over to Kapal. There were there were uh, guns or uh, rifles as at on the, the Kapal at that time, and uh, we were not allowed to Et went into Gopal uh, because uh, they uh, were afraid that uh, we from our Ils village would go to help uh, Cham people in uh, on Gopal. How far was your village from Gopal? Answer. It was about clue, uh, two kilometers away from my uh, village to Kapal. There were artilleries Il y avait de uh, used by them, and uh, we were appraised to go to Kapal to help uh, uh, the people there, we had to stay calmly in our village. Do you remember when it was that these events took place in Kopal? Answer. Réponse. Shortly before 1975, let me Peu rephrase. Avant 1975, uh, there was evacuation in 1975, Il y a une and after rebellion, après, rebellion at Kapal, the, la rebellion all at Kapal. Muslim people were evacuated. There was a fighting uh, on Kapal. 
and uh, in 1974 and 1975, Jam people uh, were evacuated. Am I correct that Ko Kopal was an island uh, in the Mekong River? Uh, answer, yes, it uh, was on the island in the middle of the river. Oui, c'était au milieu de la rivière. C'était une île. And when the fighting was going on there, Et were you able to hear or see uh, what was going on? Answer. I was living in Ampel village. My elder sibling was living in on the, the island. He was he or she was my uh, elder uh, brother or sister-in-law. He came to en fait, my village and tell me. My in-law at the time was living on the Ampel. island. He fled to Ampel village and I knew about this uh, from him or her. What did your in-law tell you about Question. what was happening in Kapal? Que vous a dit cette personne au sujet de ce qui se passait à Kopal? Answer. Those who opposed uh, Anka Alanka were smashed uh, or shot dead, and their, some of them had their throats uh, cut. Uh, most uh, Muslim men were killed, only uh, Muslim women remained. Do you remember whether the events uh, at Kapal uh, took place during Ramadan that year? ont eu lieu pendant le ramadan de cette année-là, les événements de Kopal. Answer. I uh, could not get your question, uh, Mr. Co-prosecutor. Could you repeat it? What uh, did you say a while ago? My question was um, whether the events uh, that took place at Kopal, the rebellion, the fighting, uh, did that occur wow. during the Ramadan month? Answer, no, it did not happen in Ramadan. I uh, could not tell you the exact moment when the re rebellion took place, so it, but from my recollection, it did not happen during the Ramadan. Because uh, we were not allowed to practice our religion, that is why the, uh, there was a rebellion at that time, and uh, they uh, brought in the troops uh, to uh, curb the rebellion. Do, do I understand correctly then that at that time uh, you were not allowed to respect uh, Ramadan? Do I understand correctly? Answer, yes, your understanding is correct. Réponse, oui, c'est exact. Because of this, uh, there was a rebellion happening Et at that à cause time. De cela y a eu la now, you've mentioned that uh, after this rebellion, Question, uh, the Cham people were evacuated. Can, I, can you tell us 
what happened to your family after the Copal rebellion. My families, together with the villages, were evacuated at that time. Some were sent to Batambong province, some to Stung Trong, and some other were transferred to Kroches. For my uh, villagers and uh, my families, uh, we were sent to Krachi. No one uh, were allowed to live in, uh, in our own our own villages at that time. Can you clarify, uh, what were all the Cham people from Ampol village required to leave? Or was it just some of the Cham people from your village who were moved? Answer. Some uh, could stay in uh, my village. Half of uh, the uh, villagers uh, were transferred to different places. Who was it that told you uh, that your, you and your family had to leave your home village? Answer. This district committee and Le comité de district. people at a commune level, including the security commune, guards, ordered all of us to leave our village, and we were village, instructed to board a, a motorboat or ship uh, to Batambang at that time. Where was it that you were sent uh, to board this boat? Question, et où avez-vous été envoyé pour monter à bord de ce bateau? Réponse. Some others uh, were instructed to board trucks to Batambang, to Kratje and to other places. Et à and uh, for my families and famille, some other villagers, uh, we uh, were instructed to leave for Songkai for 20 days. And after that Sankai time, we were transferred jours. back Après to -là, uh, Krachi. Nous avons été à Could you tell us where Songkai was? What, what district or commune? Was that? Something wrong. Answer. It. Song. Song Kai was located uh, close to Bengkei in Stung Trong. Stung Trong. It was close to. Kretchestria village, uh, Krochma uh, district. district de so it was located on the different side uh, from uh, Krochma. C'était donc de l'autre côté de Krochma. Do I understand correctly then that Question. you were first taken by Je boat uh, across the river to Stung Trang district? Fleuve, Is that right? Yes, uh, we were taken first uh, to Stung Trong district. Nous dans le district All of us were uh, sent there. Nous avons tous été How many Question. families were sent with you uh, by boat to Stung Trong? Réponse. 
There were many people, but I can't recall the exact uh, number. There were around 100 boats loaded with people to to Stung Trang district. Avec, euh, and when we arrived, uh, trucks came to take us to various districts, to, to uh, Song Kai and ah, to uh, other et areas. Et and there were not enough trucks uh, for those people living in the boats. Because we were gathered from various other uh, uh, villages, and not only the Ampel uh, village. village. So village there were many, many Acham people, and we were sent together. Do you know whether all the people who were being moved si with you uh, were Cham, or whether there were also Khmer people who were being moved out of Khmer district. Envoyés, uh, ou du district de no, Réponse. there were no Khmer people, non, Khmer. all of uh, the Cham people who were moved. They were all uh, Cham people, that is when we were moved from uh, Kampong Cham. Did anyone explain to you why you were being moved out of Chamar district? We were told the villages were crowded, so that we were being sent to Batambo, since there were plenty of land for us to live in Batambo, so it would not be as crowded as the villages that we were living in. And you said that when you were taken to Stung Trong, you spent 20 days in Sanke. Uh, what happened to you after that? Where were you sent? Where were you moved uh, after those 20 days? Then we were sent to Preachi area. On nous envoyé à Preachi. That was uh, situated along the Trier uh, village. Qui était près du village de Trier. And near Kampong Trang. Non loin de Kampong Trang. Was Preachi in Pre Chamar district? It is in the district of Krochman. Yes, it was located in Krochma district. And the Tree village was also located in that district. So we were sent to that village and we were placed into various houses belonging to the Khmer people. And we were totally mingled with the uh, local base people who were Khmer there. Nous devions nous mélanger aux autres gens de base qui étaient là, qui étaient des Khmer. Did anyone ever explain to you why you were moved for 20 days over to the other side of the river in Stung Chong and then moved back to Kochamar? They said that uh, because too many people had moved to uh, Battenborg and there was uh, no place for us, so we were moved again. How long did you live in Preachi village? No. We were 
there for about uh, three years. Nous y étions Then environ trois ans. Then we returned to Ampel village. Nous sommes rentrés dans le village so de Ampel. So from my uh, recollection, we left bon. our village Après for about uh, three years. Nous avons quitté notre village pendant trois ans. And then, when the attack occurred in the east zone, Ensuite, we were started to return est, to our respective villages. À rentrer dans nos villages respectifs. I'll get to um, that period where you were told to go back to your home village in a little bit. Um, first, um, can you tell us a little bit uh, about how uh, the Cham people who were moved to Prehachi village, uh, how were you treated uh, by the local cadres when you lived there? They didn't uh, do anything uh, to us. The village chief did not do anything to us. And if we wanted to remain there, we could. Or if we wanted to move on, we could move on. He didn't chase us away from his uh, village. I refer to the village chief. What were you assigned to do? during the years that you lived in Prehachi. I was actually doing the water field uh, into the rice field. Je m'occupais de l'irrigation des des rizières. And uh, I worked actually behind the Prachi uh, village that is to uh, Waterville, uh, the rice fields there. The rizières et du système d'irrigation. During the time that you lived in Prachi, were you allowed to practice the Cham religion or to speak the Cham language? Je pratiquais votre religion et de parler la langue Cham. No, no. We were not allowed to uh, engage in any worship service. And as I said it earlier, we were desecrated into various uh, homes of the Khmer people. We were not allowed uh, to engage in any worship at all, and we ate communally. Did you have to eat pork during those years? Réponse. Uh, it was mixed. C'est en fait il y avait un mélange. When we didn't uh, want to eat. Then they actually mixed uh, the pork meat manger, in the beef meat, and we didn't know about that. Et nous ne le pas. And every jam there was forced to Tous eat the pork meat, de de and some pork. of us could not take it, so uh, they vomited after they ate it. Après mangé. Did there come a time when you were in Pre Achi uh, where the local Khmer Rouge cadres from the East Zone uh, were arrested and replaced by cadres from a different region? We were arrested uh, when we were returned to Ampel village. Nous avons été we were nous told dans le that uh, the ones uh, came from Prachi village Donc would be relocated to uh, Trier. And that uh, was the time that we, some of us had been arrested and killed. Uh, 
I think you were talking about yourself and the Cham people before I asked you about what happened to you and the other Cham. Uh, I was asking about the Khmer Rouge cadres uh, from the East Zone. Uh, do you remember whether there was a time where they were replaced by Khmer Rouge cadres from the Southwest Zone? No. Réponse. No. There was no replacement. Actually, the Southwest uh, was all in control en fait, le at the time. That is, after uh, their arrival, the full authority was uh, with them, and that happened in every village. And before that, they actually were fighting with the forces from the East Zone, and after the battle, they took control of every village. What year, uh, when was it that the Southwest cadres took control of your area? The, so the evacuation took place in 1975, and that happened about three years after. Then I uh, could say it happened around mid-1978. That was the times that the killing, extensive killings uh, took place. You mentioned already uh, that you were uh, instructed uh, to go back to your home village. Uh, how long was it after the arrival of the Southwest cadres uh, that you were told to leave Prehachi and go back to Ampel village? It was not long after we arrived at Ampel village. It was only about a fortnight. And actually, we had stayed at Prachi village for about three years. Then uh, we were uh, relocated back to Ampel village. And about a fortnight later, we were sent further to Trier village. Who was it that Question. told you to go back to your home village? Qui vous a dit de and village who was Natal? it that told you ensuite, qui vous a dit when you got back to Ampel to go to Tria village? Dans le village de Trier. The village chief Réponse told us to return to Ampel village. He was a southwest cadre, and they told us that now the, uh, the peace prevailed, and that we could return to our native village. And when we were at Ampel village, saying the village chief there told us that Ampel now was crowded with people. For that reason, we were requested to relocate in Trier village after a fortnight remaining in Ampel. I want to read to you uh, a short excerpt from one of your, um, the interview that you gave to Issa Osman that was published in the Cham Rebellion. Uh, this is document E3 slash 9334, E3 slash 9334. 
Khmer ERN 00204434, English 00204442, and French 00274723. This is what you said in that interview, quote, In 1978, the cadres of the Central Zone, and I note that in your OCIJ interview, you corrected this to Southwest Zone. So let, starting again with your correction, in 1978, the cadres of the Southwest Zone came in and set up a new administration structure. The people welcomed this because the cadres claimed they were uncorrupted and had come to liberate us from the clutches of the Khmer Rouge traitors. They announced that those people who had come from far away should now go back home to their places of birth. This announcement gave us hope again for the Cham race." Uh, end of quote. Who was it that told you, uh, who was it that referred to the old cadres as traitors? Do you remember? No, I don't. No. I only heard that through group chief and the village chief about that. Uh, we heard that the Southwest group came to screen the people and that we would not be in any difficult situation after their arrival. That's what we were told. They said that they came it's because uh, of the difficult uh, condition experienced by us, and that, that peace uh, should prevail uh, shortly uh, after, uh, and that we would be, be allowed to return to our home villages. And in the interview excerpt of yours Question. that I just read, you told Issa Osman that the announcement to return to your home village gave you hope again for the Cham race. Can you explain why you had lost hope for the Cham race at that time? You've got clung report. It was their uh, policy to seriously uh, mistreat us. We were absolutely prohibited from, engage, from engaging in any prayer or worship. And if we were to make even a smallest mistake, we would be arrested and killed. Even the village chief or the uh, commune chiefs uh, in succession chef were uh, arrested and killed after the tuer. arrival of the uh, Southwest uh, group. group they kept uh, disappearing one after Il another. Now, you testified that you returned to your home village, to Ampol village, uh, for a short period. Can you tell us what you observed uh, in 1978 when you went back to your home village? And specifically, uh, how many Cham families were left in Ampol village when you returned? There were quite a number of Cham families mm -hmm. remained in the village, although I cannot tell you the total uh, number. And some Khmer uh, families were uh, living mingled uh, with the uh, Cham people there in Ampel village.
So they were living, uh, mixing with uh, the Khmer people. Il vivait donc là avec les Khmer. Let me read to you another excerpt from the interview you gave to Issa Osman. This is again E3 slash 9334. This excerpt is at Khmer 00204435, English 00204442, and French 00274723. And you're describing here uh, how you returned to Ampol village. And this is what you said. Quote, I observed that there were only 10 Cham families left in the village out of the hundreds that used to live there. My older sister Afia was among those who were still there. I stayed with her. End of quote. Does this refresh your recollection about how many Cham families were left when you returned to Ampol village? Is it correct that there were only 10 Cham families there? No, uh, there were more non. than 10 families Donc, uh, living, uh, still living in the, the village. But I cannot tell you how many Mais families it could be between 20, 30 or 40 families 20, 30, living, still living 40, there. Euh, qui y You've uh, testified that you were allowed to stay in Ampol village for about a fortnight and that you were then uh, told to go to Tria village. Can you describe for us uh, what happened during your trip from Ampol to Tria village? We were told to return, uh, to go to Trier village, so in the morning we packed our little belonging, and everything had to be placed uh, uh, on an outcast. We believed that we were sent to Trier village, and when we arrived in Lorsque the uh, village, arrivés, uh, we didn't even have any rice to eat yet, and we saw the Trier village was full of soldiers. De Trier était plein de soldats. How many uh, people or how many families, how many Cham families uh, were sent with you Combien from Ampol village to Tria. There were uh, tw 20 ox carts and the, the, uh, vingtaine de chars. Actually, the 20 outcasts were full of uh, members from 30 Cham families. Étaient plein de gens issus de 30 familles Cham. And when you were traveling on the road from Ampol to Tria village, did you see other Cham people walking or moving in that same direction? Réponse. No, I did not. Non. Uh, there was only a group of us uh, living in the village. Le village de and I saw people, lots of people in Croachman village. Dans le village de and we were all destined to, to be killed. 
And when we arrived in Trier village, the soldiers there uh, ordered us to offload our belongings and place them in a mosque there. I need to have you clarify something for me. When you arrived in Tria village, was it just the 30 families uh, that had been sent from Ampel village, or were there other Cham people who had also been sent to Tria from other villages? There were other Cham families from uh, Soi village. So Soi and Ampel villages were the two villages where the Cham people were sent to Trier uh, village. In fact, uh, more people had actually been sent to Trier village before our turn. And upon our arrival, we saw some houses were full of people who had arrived before us. Where was Soy village and can you tell us approximately how many Cham families were sent from Soy village to Tria? Half of the Cham people uh, was from La Cham, Cham uh, from Soy village, while the rest uh, came from Ampel village. So I could say about 15 to 20 families Donc, amongst us uh, were from Soy village. Dans notre groupe, du village de Soy. Do you remember uh, on your way from Ampol to Tria village, a meeting an elderly Cham woman in a village called Kasach Paches? Do you remember meeting an elderly Cham woman and do you remember what she told you? When we were almost uh, near Trier village, some people there were asking us where we were heading to, and we told them that we were told to leave Ampel village to go to Trier village. And we were told that there's some Cham people were et blindfolded and sent to uh, the river bank. Et envoyé sur les and du some Cham women uh, cried. Femmes and Cham in pleuré. fact, uh, we were told that uh, en fait, the the blindfolding took place almost every day, and those people who were being blindfolded were sent to the uh, river bank. And we heard about this information when we were approaching the Tria village, and we were told by the Cham people there. How, how far was it from Ampol to Tria village? And how long did it take you to uh, walk there that day? At that time, we traveled on an ox cart, so it was uh, rather slow. We started the journey in the morning, and when we arrived in Trier village, it was in late afternoon. And as I told you, uh, Sein, Comrade Sein, in Ampel village did not allow us to remain any more uh, in Ampel village, and we were sent to Trier uh, village. You've mentioned Comrade Sein a number of times. Uh, what was Comrade Sein doing uh, while you were traveling from Ampel to Trier? 
entre Ampel et Tria. Answer. He had overall responsibility over Kruchma district. Oui, il était responsable du district de Kruchma dans He was among the Kruchma district il faisait partie committee. du comité du district de Kruchma. When you were sent from Ampol to Tria village, uh, did your entire family go with you? That is, your wife and your two children? We went together. I uh, was traveling with my wife and my toddler and also my uh, mother-in-law was uh, with me at the time. How old was your toddler then? My toddler could speak at the time, perhaps uh, he or she was two or three years old at the time. You've said that uh, you went with your wife and your two to three year old toddler and your mother-in-law. Where were the other members of your family? Uh, did you have other children uh, at the time and where were they? Uh, we went together with other family members, uh, some members uh, within other families, uh, were, some women within other families were pregnant and they, other families also had uh, small children. Upon our arrival at uh, the designated uh, places, uh, we were separated from each other. Uh, the uh, adult or the um, uh, the girls who were full pledge uh, were not allowed to stay together with their parents at that time. Les jeunes filles n'avaient plus le droit de rester avec leurs parents à cette époque-là. Where was it that the girls, uh, the Cham girls, were separated uh, from your group? Et à quel endroit a-t-on séparé les jeunes filles Cham de votre groupe? Bây giờ mình đóng. Uh, put in a different group and uh, as for men and women they were put in different groups and at that time the, the men were allowed to go to have uh, porridge and the uh, women uh, were told to stay at a one particular place uh, it was during the time when the sun already was already uh, down at that time You said that uh, the men were told to go to a house to have porridge. Uh, how many men uh, were sent to this house where you were told you were going to have porridge? Answer. Approximately 40 of them uh, climbed up onto a house. Sont dans cette 
w were you still with your wife and toddler at this time, or had you been separated? I was separated from my wife to go to have the porridge, and my wife was staying in the mosque at that time. We, men, we as men were allowed to go to the river front and uh, we were told to uh, stand in line at that time and uh, they pointed a gun at our necks at that time. It was that time that I uh, parted from my wife and a toddler. Did you ever see your wife and toddler? After that, question et après cela, avez-vous jamais revu votre femme et votre tout petit? Answer: No. Réponse: Non. After I was tied up, I was uh, bitten, après que l'on m'a attaché, j'ai été battu, and uh, they used the rubber sandals to hit our heads. We, some of us, uh, fell down to the ground, and they grabbed our hairs. They kicked us uh, repeatedly, and they said that uh, these people were uh, Muslims. And if uh, we stated that uh, we were Khmer, they would uh, repeatedly kick and uh, bit us at that time. We were afraid at that time, that's why we said uh, we were Khmer. You said that when you arrived in Tria village, you saw um, many soldiers. Can, can you describe for us where it was that you saw the soldiers uh, when you arrived in Tria village and what they were doing? Answer. The, the soldiers uh, were killing people. Réponse. Les soldats tuaient des gens. And and uh, people uh, ropes uh, were used to tie uh, to tie uh, people. Pour attacher les gens. And uh, we uh, were put on a boat. On nous a placé à bord d'un bateau. Uh, and the boat uh, went uh, into the uh, middle of the river. I was staying in uh, that house, and they came to collect uh, uh, some of us uh, from time to time. I was on uh, the house, and uh, we, some of us, uh, were weeping and crying at that time. Well. President, it is now time for a short break. The chamber will take a short break, break from now until 3 p.m. Court officer, please find a proper place for this witness during the break time and please invite him back into the courtroom at 3 p.m. The court is now in recess.